Welcome to this next video where we will now take a look at the derivations of the other compound angle formulae. Just a reminder here of these other compound angles, cos of a plus b and both sine of a plus b and a minus b. To establish these formulae, we derive them using the formula for cos of a minus b, which we now definitely fully believe and accept. Note that these derivations are acquired knowledge and therefore can be examined. We start here with looking to derive a formula for cos of a plus b. The first step is to make it fit the formula for cos of a minus b, and we do this by making this minus and making b negative. Minus times a minus is a plus, so these two are definitely still equal to each other. Now that we've done the first step, we continue by applying the cos of a minus b formula to expand. We can now apply our reduction knowledge to the two ratios of negative b, an acute angle in the fourth quad, so cos of negative b reduces to cos of b, and sine of negative b reduces to negative sine b. This then results in the formula cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. And this is the expansion of the compound angle cos of a plus b. If we switch over now to looking at the sine compound angles, the first step is again to aim towards writing it as the cos of the difference of two angles. But how do we get there? First, we have to apply co-ratios. So sine of an angle, remember, is cos of 90 minus that angle. So sine of a plus b is cos of 90 minus a plus b. Getting your brackets correct here is crucial, otherwise the signs are going to get all mixed up. Multiply out the brackets inside and then rearrange the brackets so that you get cos of the difference of 90 minus a and b. Now expand, again using the very first formula we found, which is cos of the difference of two angles, and then by applying co-ratios, we see this results in the formula sine a cos b plus cos a sine b, the expansion of the compound angle sine of a plus b. For sine of a minus b, we take a very similar approach in the beginning. Just watch the signs very closely. Again, we have to create a minus here, which means we need to make b negative. We now have cos of the difference between two angles, and so we expand according to its formula. This next step is applying both co-ratios and reduction of the fourth quad angles. And then finally, this results in the formula sine a cos b minus cos a sine b, which is the expansion of sine of a minus b. Now that we have worked through how to derive all of these compound angle formulae, it is maybe an idea to pause on them for a moment as you are expected to know them and to recognize when and how to use them. Some neat ways to help you remember some of the differences between each pair are for sine. A nice play on words here is that the sine for sine stays the same. And then for cos, well, it's all about cos. So here where the ratios are repeated within each term, cos is always first. Hopefully, this wraps the compound angles theory up nicely for you and enables you to really start getting comfortable with it all. The next video will take you through the theory of double angles. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.